just when we think we know what devices can spy on on our activities, a new one comes to light. This one is called the Inertial Measurement Unit or IMU and it's on every modern smartphone. Initially made for gaming, some programmers have found use of this for tracking your actions. This thing will sneak up on you and track things about you that you don't even expect and it is hard to evade. I'll explain what this device does and see if we can evade it at the end of the video. Although I knew some things about the inertial measurement unit or IMU, this is something that blindsided me because I didn't realize what this technology can really do fully. So we'll dig deep into this in a moment. First, I'd like to tell you that I'm on the library platform LBRY and I post videos there ahead of YouTube. So you will see this first on there. I'm in the top 50 creators on library and thank you to those watching on library for your support. There's a link in the description to follow me there. Also, thank you for your support in my products. My store is in the description and I make privacy products like the Google Brax phones, Brax routers, and Bytes VPN. So your support is appreciated and helps sustain this channel. Back to our topic. You may be familiar with the use of the Inertial Measurement Unit or IMU when you do gaming. It allows an application to sense your movement so you can have a more immersive experience with games. The key parts of an IMU is a combination of the gyroscope, accelerometer, and also a magnetometer. Gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers are used in spacecraft technology to determine the attitude of an object, basically involving yaw, pitch, and roll on three axes, X, Y, and Z. You can see how you can apply this to games since you can basically direct your gameplay by physically moving the phone around. Then this lately got expanded to physical fitness. One of the most common uses of the IMU nowadays is as a pedometer, meaning it counts steps. Your iPhone, for example, will tell you that you need to move more each day. It senses that the phone is on your body, but the amount of movement is very slight. So it tells you that you need to exercise more. This then is used to estimate how many calories you're burning and so on. Some fitness trackers like Fitbit put the sensor on a watch, same with Apple Watch. So often you have double the IMU sensors on your body. If you actually understand how this device works, then you can start to realize how it can collect data. To a programmer, your movements are tracked as acceleration speeds in some axis and some amount of time. For example, you could accelerate 2 meters per second squared on the x-axis, 5 meters per second squared on the y-axis, and 3 meters per second squared for the z-axis. All of this occurred in, let's say, 1.5 seconds. If you have a collection of these moves, you have a position history in space over time. It can also point this activity in a particular direction using a compass heading by the use of the magnetometer. So from the starting position, movements can be traced over a period of time and then you can find your end position. This kind of navigational tracking is used by cruising sailboats all the time. I use it myself as a sailor. This is called dead reckoning. Without using a GPS, you track a compass heading for a certain amount of time and a certain amount of miles and you log it and you should be able to estimate it well enough to find a destination based on every move that you made with a compass and the amount of time and then you can plot it on a map. Now with dead reckoning, you need to have a very well defined starting position that you can mark on a map. Once you do that, then your relative position to your original starting point can be established. An IMU is a lot more sophisticated device than a sailor doing dead reckoning by hand. For one, a sailor may not be paying attention and may steer away from the planned compass heading. Also, the times may not be exact. In contrast, an IMU does not make these kinds of mistakes. It records every move in milliseconds and again in three axes. It correlates this to a compass heading. 
Some of the best IMUs can accurately provide a location within an accuracy of 50 meters up to 17 minutes, meaning it can do dead reckoning to an accuracy of 50 meters up to 17 minutes of activity. Now, since this is based on dead reckoning only with a known starting position, the problem with an IMU is that if it develops an error, it will do so cumulatively. And so at some point it needs to pause and recalibrate to a known position like a GPS to correct errors, which it will do. It should come as no surprise then that someone could estimate your position with an IMU even without a GPS. What is really surprising, which I will prove to you later, is that this kind of tracking requires no permissions at all on your device. None. I was talking to a programmer in ad technology or ad tech. These are basically the people who program browser fingerprinting and so on. And they can estimate your position well enough, even without a GPS, to identify your current position as long as they have some sort of starting point, even like an IP address. And worse yet, if you have the same travel habits every day, then your device can be fingerprinted based on behavior. So if you leave your house at 7.15 a.m. to go to work and you go to a specific area, they can determine that. If the location was turned on even momentarily, it could store that location and then start doing dead reckoning from there. I've always figured that if I disable a location permission on an app, let's say like Waze, then when I'm no longer using the app, in theory, the app can stop tracking me. However, that is apparently not the case. A weather app can request a location once when you launch it so you can give it weather for your location. Presumably, you give the app location permission when in use only. Then you leave the app and you think you're safe. But that weather app can now shift to IMU tracking and still figure out what you're doing. And it can re-verify and correct errors once you launch the app again and it gets a GPS fix. In other words, an IMU when used with a GPS could track you all day. And as I said, with no permissions necessary. The problem is that we don't know which apps use the IMU. Certain apps will obviously use an IMU, like a physical fitness app. And strangely enough, you need to give an app permissions for physical activity. I guess on Android, they make a distinction for apps that can track things like heart rate. But apparently, they don't care about what can be tracked by the IMU. Apps that clearly use an IMU would be a compass app or a level or bubble level. Let me show you several kinds of apps that clearly use an IMU and we'll see what permissions they need. First, this is a car racing game. This steers the car by tilting the phone sideways. I don't really play games, but this looks like fun. Okay, now let's check to see if there's a permission to use the IMU or the gyroscope. Nope, no permissions. Here's a fitness app, MyFitnessPal. I don't really know what it does because I'm not going to sign up. But let's look at the permissions. And there you see this one asks for physical activity permission. So it's using the gyro but with permission. Here's the Fitbit app. Looks like it's made to store weight, food consumption, and track exercise. Permission for gyro? Nothing, even though it says track exercise. Here's Fit On. Again, I'm not going to sign up, not sure what it does, but there's no physical activity tracking. There's no permission. Here's a Compass app. A compass uses the magnetometer part of the IMU. I don't have any location permissions granted. It works. As you can see, there are no permissions at all for the gyro and lots of ads and looks like attempts at location tracking with the lat long position. This one is a pure gyro implementation. Very simple, but definitely IMU based. As you can see here, there are no permissions requested, even though it is clearly using the IMU. 
So you can see here that many apps that use the inertial measurement unit for gyro, accelerometer, and magnetometer data have no permissions. Now why is this? Let me show you what the Android developer document says about permissions for the IMU. And you can see they actually drew up a very detailed explanation of the permissions required to use the IMU. But it says this, if your app relies only on raw data from other built-in sensors on the device, such as the accelerometer and gyroscope, you don't need to declare this new permission in your app. This kind of permission holes is what I worry about. Bad companies like Facebook will look at these as an opportunity to trick us and steal our data. For example, Facebook used low-level networking tools like ARP, likely also on permission to track MAC addresses. And it wouldn't surprise me if Facebook is working on tracking all of you via IMU. They're likely not doing it yet since I haven't seen it in the EULA, but give it time. Then again, I haven't read the Facebook EULA lately. They could add this anytime. Maybe some of you can check. Now it gets worse. These gyroscopes are so sensitive that they can actually sense vibration. According to the AdTech programmer I was talking to, in the laboratory, they can actually capture conversations using this unpermissioned IMU. It's not high fidelity, so they will miss a lot of words, but that's pretty crazy that the IMU can be used as a microphone. And I bet you the intelligence agencies are already using that. Reminds me how the CIA used the speaker on Samsung TVs to listen in to you. Same deal. Now, what's our defense against this? The problem is that an app can insert code related to the IMU and IMU tracking without declaring it. So you don't actually know which app is doing this today. From my conversation with the ad tech guy, this is clearly intended for some serious device fingerprinting and even movement fingerprinting. Combined even with some fixed IP address, it will clearly identify specific people uniquely since we all have different movement habit or even gesture habit. I'm sure it could detect someone's gender just from physical movement patterns or detect that the phone is in a handbag. And the scary part of this is how it can be combined with other data like occasional GPS data or occasional IP addresses to really pinpoint a user. Forget about cookies. That kind of tracking is really backward now. I don't want to even bother with blocking cookies and certainly not with blocking JavaScript. There are other ways they do it. So the issue is that any app can possibly be spying on you without you knowing it. The safer apps could be the ones on Ftroid. The reason is that a third party, Ftroid.org, can see the source code and check for these kinds of things. I have no idea if Ftroid checks for IMU API calls, but they should and should document it. Be the leader of Ftroid and do things differently from Google. As far as a Google Play Store app is concerned or the iOS App Store, we clearly have no way of knowing what an app can do. So start with distrust. Will an app stand to gain from this tracking? Apps that survive mostly from advertising is a worry. Free games are a big worry. Weather apps, compass apps, levels, flashlights. The more useless little apps you have, the more risk that they have some illegitimate purpose. The big companies like Facebook have to state that they do this in their EULA, so at least we can keep an eye on them there. Be careful about what apps you install. Someone keeps asking me if I can de-Google a Huawei phone. In theory, Huawei has no Google in it already, but it has Huawei. And many phones, Huawei specifically, cannot be bootloader unlocked, meaning they make sure you cannot change the operating system at all. This means that they can hide apps in there or even replace standard Android AOSB apps with their own version with trackers like an IMU tracker and you cannot delete it. 
So again, start with an attitude of distrust. If someone has something to gain from collecting your data, then avoid that platform, especially if they take an extra effort to lock it down. If you use a de-googled phone with apps mostly from F-Droid, you will avoid this kind of tracking from the IMU. I can imagine that this data can also be combined with the contact tracing with Bluetooth using raw Bluetooth data. There's another example. Yes, you may need to give permission for COVID contact tracing to be used and reported to you, but your Bluetooth emits raw data, which I bet someone could capture without permissions either, or capture it on a different device. So be careful folks, the battle for privacy is a daily struggle. This is definitely a net loss to privacy. Another trick up someone's sleeve that we cannot track. This is even worse than browser fingerprinting, which also could not be tracked. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel and watch those other videos related to the Google phones and Linux phones. These are examples of tools we can use to fight back. Thank you for watching.